Welcome back. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg accusing House Republicans of interfering with his investigation into former President Trump. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan is now requesting documents from Bragg, calling on him to testify under oath before Congress. Bragg's legal counsel claims the request is, quote, an unlawful incursion into New York's sovereignty. Joining me right now is the man himself asking two former attorneys from the Manhattan DA's office seeking information on whether or not Bragg's prosecution of Trump is politically motivated is House Judiciary Committee Chairman, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for being here this morning. What, what is your response to Bragg's uh, response to you? You're breaching his <laughs> sovereignty. Well, they're saying we're interfering. How about they're interfering with a federal election? Remember, Maria, the, the Justice Department wasn't going to bring this case. The previous district attorney, Cy Vance, wasn't going to bring this case, didn't bring this case. And even Alvin Bragg himself, when he first gets elected, said, there's no way I'd bring this case. I can't put Michael Cohen on the witness stand. I can't have this guy who lied to Congress six times, who went to prison for lying. I can't bring this case. And then all of a sudden, he changes his mind. And what was the intervening event? President Trump announces he's running for president, and he's leading in every single poll. So I think that's what changed his mind, in addition to the two guys we want to talk to, Mr. Pomerantz, Mr. Dunn, who were his assistants, and resigned when Alvin Bragg said he wasn't going to bring the case, threw a pitch to fit, got the left all fired up, and now it looks like he is going to bring this case forward. So we want to talk to Mr. Pomerantz and Mr. Dunn, find out exactly what was going on here, and we want the documents and communications. After all, federal money goes to this district attorney's office, and we're talking about the most important federal election we have, election for president of the United States. So you think he will then bring, bring the case forward, then? You think Trump will be indicted? I do not know. Uh, I mean, you know, we've all been sort of expecting something this week. That's what's been reported, so we don't know. We got the letter back from Mr. Bragg yesterday, 10 o'clock. We've reviewed the letter. We're going to continue to review it, talk to our colleagues, talk to our legal counsel, talk to House counsel, and figure out what may happen next. But the reason we sent the letter to Mr. Pomerantz, Mr. Dunn, is we really want to talk to those two individuals, and they no longer work at the uh, district attorney's office. Well, this is why you have the weaponization subcommittee. I mean, yep. all of the politics that are running through all of our agencies, when we all know that there has been uh, influence peddling in plain sight, all that evidence on the Biden laptop, and yet White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre is dodging questions about the Biden family's connections to CEFC, the Chinese energy company, where uh, the big guy was to get 10 percent. Watch this. House Oversight says they've got bank records showing a Chinese energy company paying three Biden family members through a third party. What were they paid for? I'm just not going to respond to that from here. We have heard from House Republicans for years and years and years um, how, uh, how the inaccuracies and lies when it comes to this issue. And I don't even where to begin to even answer that question. So she says it's inaccuracies and lies. I mean, we've got new emails obtained from America First Legal finding that the office of then Vice President Biden tried to squash yeah. a Bloomberg news story about Hunter Biden at the request of Hunter's firm. So they were putting out fires about uh, the truth along the way, Congressman. Yeah, and, and Peter Ducey asked the right question. What did they yeah. do for the money? What service did they provide? What, what value did they add? What were they doing for $3 million coming to Robinson Walker, who then distributed to Biden family members? What did they do? So I think that's sort of the fundamental question. And the idea that Republicans are coming after the Biden... I mean, look, we just want the facts and put the facts on the table. But the Democrats have been going after President Trump now for seven and a half years. I mean, first it was Russia. Then it was his phone call with Zelensky. Then give us his tax records. Then his business records. Then his kids' uh, business records. And now maybe this issue in, in, in the district attorney's office in Manhattan. I mean, they have never stopped. And it's funny because everything they said was going to put President Trump in jail. None of that stuff did. None of it did. And, and, and again, here we go one more time with the Democrats. And yet they turn around and say, we're the ones who are going after. We just want to put the facts on the table. We want to ask that fundamental question. What did you do to get $3 million transferred uh, through this guy to the Biden family members? And that's only one deal. James Comer told us there's right. 11 more deals. But let's talk about the Parents' Bill of Rights. Congressman, you've been doing so much to protect parents out there after they turned around your Democrat colleagues turned around and tried to target parents, school moms, uh, for being domestic terrorists. Yeah. The Democrats told us that they would never use domestic terrorism measures against moms and dads. They did. They did it in the northern district of uh, Georgia. That's in our report that we released three days ago. The Democrats said that this was widespread all across the country. No, it wasn't. And the Democrats said that there was no coordination with school board groups and the government prior to them sending the letter and prior to Merrick Garland issuing his memorandum on uh, October 4th, 2021. Yes, there was. We know that the school board groups were working with the White House, the Department of Justice, and the Department of Education prior to, to create the predicate to, to target parents for simply showing up and advocating for their son or daughter. And the best line in that report isn't from Jim Jordan or Mike Johnson or any of our members on our committee. The best line in that report is from a U.S. attorney, Democrat U.S. attorney, who said, this looks like it's all manufactured. We've talked to local law enforcement. They're wondering, what is this, this whole federal involvement? So it was a manufactured 
for political reasons. Uh, and, and, and that's the big concern is these agencies have been turned on the very people, the American people who they're supposed to serve. Yeah. Do you think that the Manhattan DA is going after Trump because the Republicans are going after Hunter Biden's business deals? I think he's. I think he's facing the uh, the left, the pressure from the left, and these two individuals who who left and, and pitched the fit and threw all the th made all the noise and wrote the book. Uh, and I think it's really driven by the fact President Trump announced. Remember, yeah. they've been out to get President Trump. First, it was first it was the uh, Trump Russia investigation yeah, in 2016. Right, then it was yeah. Mueller, and on and on it goes. So I think it's I think it's all that combination. What are you going to do, Congressman? You and your colleagues, as this uh, election season heats up, you've got Ron DeSantis who are expecting to come in. I just had a great conversation with Mike Pence. You've got Tim Scott uh, probably coming through. You've got of course, those who have already announced Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, yeah. and then you've got President Trump. Who will you support? Oh, I'm for President Trump. Been for President Trump. No one is. No one has done more what he said he would do when he got elected. I, I think the best president, certainly in our lifetime. So I'm for President Trump. I want him to win. Now we got a lot of a lot of other good candidates. Uh, and there, I'm for Mike Pompeo. I served with him. A great guy. Ron DeSantis served with him. He was one of the original nine who helped us form the Freedom Caucus. But I'm for President Trump. Yeah, Mike Pompeo really did an excellent job on China, and President Trump did as well. That one yeah. of the first guests he had to Mar-a-Lago was Xi Jinping, and as he's serving him chocolate cake, he just told him, "We just, you know, we just sent strikes to Syria." Uh, boom. And the Chinese didn't know what to make of Donald Trump. Yeah, well, he projected strength from the Oval Office. He got more done for the American people. Told us he's going to cut taxes. He did. Told us he reduced regulations. Yeah. He did. Told us he put conservatives on the court. He did. Told us he built the wall. He did. Told us he put the embassy in Jerusalem. He did. You could just go down the yeah. list. That's the kind of leader I want. I think, frankly, when you compare what he did and what we've had under Joe Biden for 26 months, what a contrast. Yeah. So I'm 100 percent for President Trump. All right, Congressman, we're going to be watching this. It's going to be a big year. We know it. You're going to be right there leading things in terms of the judiciary, and we appreciate your leadership. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you.